In 1914, archaeologists found an astonishing location in Ganung Padang, in Indonesia. Two ancient stone mountains rest in this region, mountains in the form of pyramids, their size is truly massive. Intrigued by their shape, this 1914 team initiated a series of test digs in the small likelihood that they were man-made. The proposition of these two huge land features actually being pyramids, must have been virtually unthinkable to these initial explorers, their subsequent excavation also concluded that the site was indeed a natural formation. However, fast forward 100 years of technological advances in archaeology, photography, ground penetrating radar and satellite imaging, and we can now take much deeper looks at locations, gaining far greater insight than was possible a century ago. The archaeological societies are currently in a panic, in regards to an expedition which is being undertaken to this very site. Over 100 years after its initial discovery and disregardment. What is interesting to note, a detail this team must be aware of, a detail largely suppressed and rarely discussed, is the fact that very ancient monuments rest upon the tops of each mountain, monuments that were later dated at 2500 years old, and confirmed as artificial megalithic structures. The reason the archaeological community is worrying, is due to their possible size. They would dwarf the Great Pyramids of Giza. However, the pyramids, in Giza are in a very special location, they in fact rest on the center of the world's land mass, the question would be, why would Indonesia possess such ginormous pyramids? In 2010, geologist Dr. Daninata Wijaja, who earned a doctorate at Caltech, recognized the mountains as possible man-made pyramids, and began to explore using ground-penetrating radar, seismic tomography, resistivity survey and other remote sensing techniques, as well as some direct excavations and deep core drilling. The results were immediately intriguing, producing evidence of deeply buried man-made chambers and yielding carbon dates going back as far as 26,000 years. This would make the construction prior to the last ice age. Such ideas are heresy to mainstream archaeologists. The archaeological establishment in Indonesia banded together against Dr. Nato Wijaja and his team, lobbied the political authorities, agitated locally and succeeded in slowing down, though not completely stopping, the further exploration of Ganung Padang. However Dr. Nato Wijaja fought back, doing some high-level lobbying of his own, taking the matter to the president of Indonesia himself. There were further delays to do with elections in Indonesia but just a couple of months ago, the final obstacles were lifted and Dr. Nato Wijaga and his team moved back on to the Ganung Padang site with full approval to go ahead with their work, including permission to excavate the concealed chambers. Although it may not be widely received, this excavation may be the most important currently being undertaken on Earth. Mainstream archaeologists are furious, and have been lobbying to get the work stopped, fortunately to no avail. Preliminary excavations have produced results that prove beyond doubt, that Ganung Padang is indeed a man-made pyramid of great antiquity. Even the relatively young layer so far excavated, the second artificial columnar rock layer beneath the megalithic site visible on the surface, has yielded dates of 5200 BC, nearly 3000 years older than the orthodox dating for the pyramids of Giza in Egypt. They are also firm indications from the original remote sensing and core drilling work that there is much older layers below. In short, it is now evident to all, that the site is vastly older than the 2500 years archaeologists had insisted upon for decades. Even the most hostile are now quietly reframing their assessment of the site and referring to it as a gigantic terrace tomb, which was part of the biggest megalithic culture in the archipelago. I will keep you posted.
It is now a well-known, heavily studied fact that the modern-day bird was once a very different-looking animal. Evolution in the form of a radical transformational adaptation, forced upon them by gradual changes in the Earth's environment, from which they whence came, that being the dinosaur. We now know this to be fact, thanks to modern technology. Our capability to now scan these fossils, some found remarkably well-preserved, still fortunately containing many things, which have allowed us to discover that dinosaurs had bird brains. Or more accurately, birds have dinosaur brains. With current investigations even shining light upon the reality that many of these gigantic animals, including the T-Rex, once had manes made of feathers. This drastic change from the dinosaur, resulting in the vast array of creatures we see today, from the ostrich to the albatross, even to the commonly domesticated budgerigar. Yet they all share one common trait, a significant reduction in their size. Even animals which survived unchanged, such as the crocodile, still shrank considerably. This shrinking of said species having been demanded of them by environmental changes. Evolutionary adaptation, as we have covered in the past, is, in the channel's opinion, in its true sense, an adaptation of specific sets of vertebrate types the true definition of species, not as Darwinian theory posits, of leaps between such. Thus, evolution witnessed within the animal kingdom is not indicative of a shared single ancestry, but inseparable branching from specific vertebrae or phyla groups, never proven to have leaped from one to another. As such, modern-day birds could in fact be seen as the product of de-evolutionary adaptation. This loss of size would, in all probability, have also resulting in a deterioration in their intellectual potential. This being due to the considerable decrease in brain mass, possibly derived from cataclysm, which deprived them of the resources needed to remain at such gigantic sizes. The reason for this digression is the channel's postulation of this same process, having once possibly occurred to Homo sapiens also. Could this explain why some of the oldest ruins are also some of the most advanced? With many remaining beyond the reach of modern man's ability to understand them, is it possible that man once had a much higher intellect than us today, due to a far greater sized cranium? Simply put, were we once giants, just as modern-day birds were once dinosaurs? Legends and accounts of ancient giants can be found all over the world, also featuring in many ancient religious teachings. Additionally, many of the still unexplained sites of Earth regularly feature doorways many feet, sometimes even meters above that which is required by and for humans of our modern scale. The Terracotta Army, for example, is believed by many independent researchers, including Mystery History, to have been made by a lost civilization, and their average height, intriguingly, is much taller than modern man. Many accounts exist of giants, which share similar descriptive characteristics. Red hair, double rowed teeth, elongated skulls, etc. With many accounts of red-headed giant remains actually discovered and excavated all over the world, yet often all that survives of these reported events is a small news article, regularly noting Smithsonian involvement in said recoveries, yet seemingly and conveniently always slipping away from the public domain. Lovelock Cave being another example, locals tell of it once being the home of a group of red-headed giants, which was eventually blocked and the giants burnt alive, a giant handprint still visible on a rock in the cave presumably made by one of these individuals during their unpleasant demise. Yet what has to be the most compelling piece of evidence, fortunately still in view to suggest giants did indeed once exist, are footprints found all over the globe, once laid down upon sediment, now fossilized into solid stone. These footprints range in size up to a few meters in length, indicating that humans, at some point in the distant past, 
may have been even larger than many dinosaur species. This would have undoubtedly given them the capability to have moved the ancient megaliths we often cover, and also the ingenious nature of many of said sites due to a larger brain. Are these footprints proof that we too, just like the modern bird, were once monstrous in size? Yet at some point within antiquity, experienced a similar or the same cataclysmic events which forced a shrinking of our mass over many generations. Could this de-evolution have been due to what titled the axis of the Earth? When our Earth was aligned, did it have the ability to provide and sustain such growth? Once providing a suitable habitat for an abundance of resources, required for the far greater size food chain witnessed during the Jurassic period? We find the evidence to support the hypothesis of giant ancient humans highly compelling.